without objection. Thank, uh, let me congratulate my friend from Oregon for his remarks and simply to point out uh, to the chair and, uh, and to, to my fellow members that this is another example of bipartisan accomplishments uh, in, in the United States Senate and in the House. Um, this represents a lot of work on both ends of the building, Republicans and Democrats coming together. This is about to get done, as my friend said. And, uh, and, and once we, we, we put this on top of a number of accomplishments, including education, including uh, uh, dealing with the Zika virus, including uh, uh, the, dealing with the drug problem, uh, and, and so many other things, that we've actually been able to get legislation done, uh, sent to the president, signed into law, to um, help make our country better and stronger and, and better protected. So I appreciate what my friend uh, has said about the Tosca bill, and I'm optimistic about it also. Now, uh, switching gears to the National Defense Authorization Act, uh, Madam President, uh, I'm optimistic about that also. Uh, obviously, we had hoped to pass the bill before Memorial Day uh, as a tribute to um, the people who've um, gone before us and paid the ultimate sacrifice for uh, the freedom that we enjoy as Americans. Um, obviously, the bill has taken longer than I hoped it would, and for reasons that are hard for me uh, to understand. Nevertheless, we're going to get to it. Um, uh, we, are, we are on the bill now, and we're going to hopefully finish it the week after the Memorial Day recess. Um, and, and I very much uh, appreciate the fact that we're going to pass another bipartisan NDAA bill, which will be signed by the President. It's going to give the, the um, defense, to give our troops the opportunity uh, to have the tools, equipment, and resources they need in a very dangerous world. Um, it funds the Defense Department at $602 billion. And our friends should know, and the public should know, Madam President, that this $602 billion is the figure requested by the President of the United States. So we are coming with a bipartisan number. We've had some, uh, some questions on the part of our friends on the other side of the aisle about spending elsewhere. But uh, we, should, we should be clear, and uh, there's no question about it. The President requested $602 billion for defense, and this bill gives our troops and the President that $602 billion. It deals with such important issues as uh, preserving the progress we've made in Afghanistan, uh, continuing our fight against the Islamic State, bolstering readiness against an aggressive Russia, uh, standing up uh, on behalf of one of our, our uh, most important allies, the State of Israel, uh, in a very, very uh, troubling time. Earlier this year, Director of National Intelligence James Clapper said it correctly. He reiterated the reality of unpredictable instability, and that's what we're facing, Madam President. So this bill is designed to address that. Uh, also, I, I would mention that it is designed to, uh, to alleviate some of the shortages caused by the Budget Control Act when it was passed in 2011. The world is a lot different today than it was in 2011. The law put in place across the board defense cuts as a last resort, which were really never intended to take place. Collectively, we should have addressed the mandatory programs where the, where the spending problems actually are. But um, instead, over the past six years, the Budget Control Act has required almost $200 billion in defense cuts. It remains the law of the land. The sequestration remains the law of the land and uh, will return unless Congress acts in 2018. Um, the Army now has 100,000 fewer soldiers than it did four years ago. The Marines will be nearly 5,000 below their optimal force. Our Air Force is the smallest it's ever been in the history of the Air Force. And with 272 ships in the fleet, the Navy is well below its requirement 
of 308 ships. Um, I'm pleased to serve as chairman of the Sea Power Subcommittee of, of the Armed Services Committee, and as such, I was happy to work with other members of the subcommittee on the Navy and Sea Power title to this bill. I want to thank my colleague, Senator Hirono of Hawaii, the ranking Democrat member of the subcommittee, for her leadership. Um, as I said, we're years away from achieving the Navy's ship requirement of 308 ships. There's also no plan to meet the National Defense Panel's recommendation for more ships, either 323 at a minimum or up to 346 ships. So we're well away from what we really need to do to protect America and our freedom of movement around the globe. Meanwhile, the Navy has, a, has significant budget constraints. Its 2017 request is $8 billion less than the 2017 value, present value, from last year's budget. But um, we, we worked on a number of items uh, to, to do the best we can with the money we have. First, we looked at the viability of the 30-year shipbuilding plan. Secondly, we worked to ensure that limited taxpayer dollars are used wisely. Thirdly, we look forward to, to the future and what should be required uh, of our future surface combatant ships and what costs might constrain the budget. And fourthly, we work to ensure that the Navy and Marine Corps can continue to provide force protection around the world. So thanks to the members of my subcommittee and my ranking member, Senator Hirono, for that. But sea power is only one part of uh, the bill. It may be the one that I worked on uh, more uh, carefully, but um, other parts of the National Defense Authorization Bill, as you know, Madam President, is uh, there's no authorization in the bill for another round of base closings. I very much support that provision and believe that no further base closing rounds should be authorized, and we don't. Uh, also, there's an extension of prohibitions on the closing of Guantanamo Bay and uh, uh, prohibition of transfer of any detainees from there, and support for the recommendation of the National Commission on the Future of the Army regarding aviation force structure. I advocated the creation of this commission, along with my colleague Senator Graham, in the wake of unvetted proposals to cut the National Guard and reallocate uh, Apache helicopters. So I'm glad that we've addressed that problem and, uh, and, and are on the way, I think, hopefully, week after next, to passing this important bill. It's fitting that Americans will gather on Memorial Day in the next few days, remembering the patriots who made the ultimate sacrifice and honoring the patriots who are today voluntarily stepping forward to make our country strong and great and help all of our citizens enjoy the freedoms that we have today. So I'm glad to be part of this bill. I congratulate the leadership of uh, the committee and the Senate, and I look forward to passing this defense bill